In my last video, I tested out this Turtle Wax Max Power Car Wash Soap. And although it worked really well, I was a little bit disappointed because when I did my uh, pH test, it wasn't registering what they say. So one of the main selling points of this stuff is that you can change from moderate to aggressive and extreme depending on how much solution you put in. It increases the pH level. The higher the pH, the more cleaning ability it has typically. So for today's video, I went ahead and ordered this. A pair of instruments, high quality, precision pH meter, and we're gonna test this using that because in the last video, I used these little pH test strips, which aren't super accurate, but they give you a good idea of what's going on. But um, I wanted to test this and see exactly where it's at. So the MSDS sheet for this product from Turtle Wax shows that it has a pH of 10.25. Now in my original test, I was not getting that at all. With those test strips, I would dip it in straight into the solution and it was basically coming out neutral. Again, these are a little bit difficult to read because they have four different colors that you can judge on. Uh, but I tried out the first bottle that I had and it was neutral to me. On these, for sure, it showed neutral. I went out and got a secondary bottle and that one came back, it did change the color a little bit, it darkened it a little bit, especially on this top row of color, but on the second row, it didn't change at all. So, I, you know, it's, it's hard to tell. It basically came out uh, maybe up to an eight or nine or something like that, but it was not a 10 or anything like that. So with the Apera Instruments pH tester, I found this company online and it shows on their website that they work with companies like Duke University, Harvard's Medical School, uh, tons of different universities, Hershey's, Smuckers and a bunch of different brands. So I figured, yeah, we should be able to rely on this, right? So let's go ahead and hop into this and I'll show you exactly how I tested it. Okay, so when you open up the kit, there are three little bottles here and these are your pH calibration solutions. One's a pH 7.0, one is a pH 4.0 and the other is a pH 10.01. Why are there three different ones? Well, basically that just increases the accuracy across the whole range, right? From zero to 14. So I went ahead and took the tester and I went through the whole three point calibration test. Again, this is gonna make it accurate throughout the whole range as opposed to just taking that one 7.0 at the ends, you can get a little bit off there, I guess. So if you do it at those three different points, you're staying accurate through everything. Now I am no scientist, so I'm just gonna be using this test kit to the best of my abilities. If I mess up or anything like that, please comment down below and let me know uh, exactly what you would do. And one other thing, this is the basic pH tester. There's also a probe type, which I guess is usually used for baking and foods and things like that, where you can probe it into the solution. Um, Maybe that one is more accurate, I don't know. I just got the basic one because that seemed like what I needed. But let me know if you guys have any uh, experience with these, which one you like. So I went ahead and took the Turtle Wax Max Power. This is the new bottle, the one that shows the number one selling wash. Um, and poured it into a little test vial, stuck the pH tester in there and let it calibrate and let it kind of do its thing until it finally gives you a little happy, happy face right on the little guide there. That means it's holding there and that's your pH. Now on my first test, it started off high, stuck to the solution in there. You want to spin it around, try and release any bubbles or anything like that so that the sensor is pure in contact with the solution. It started off a little bit high and started dropping and on its way down. Every once in a while it would hold and then start dropping again so it only hold for a second. But eventually we got down, again, on the SDS sheet it shows 10.25. We started getting that 10.3 range and it started really long locking in at that range, but eventually it finally did come down and it locked on 10.25, which I was kind of shocked at. Completely accurate, 10.25 uh, pH, which is what their SDS sheet shows on that bottle, exactly. So I was very, very impressed. Now again, these pH test strips, guys, weren't the best, obviously. Uh, they, gave me, they gave me a good idea on the highs and lows, like extremes, but to really pinpoint stuff in, um, I'll be going on and continually using a professional grade pH tester like this. Now for part two, I wanted to test the original bottle because that one really, when I put that pH test strip in there, was really neutral, it didn't have any change at all. So I really wanted to test that one. And again, this one has been sitting in my shop for quite some time, eight months, 10 months, something like that. Uh, I have used some of it, so maybe with the air, I wasn't sure if it maybe kind of went flat or diluted down or whatever else. Not sure, um, but again, it was looking pH neutral on those test strips, so I went ahead and tested it. And it didn't get to the 10.25, but it still was a higher pH. Now, after testing a couple of times, it settled in at 9.11, 9.13, somewhere right around there. So higher pH, definitely not the 10.25, but again, older bottle, so that may be the solution and, and the problem. So just to be sure though, I wanted to make sure I'm getting, still getting an accurate rating here. So once again, I went ahead and rinsed off the meter and then tested it back into the 7.0 solution. And although we're off a little bit now, it's probably, there's probably a little bit of residue still on the sensor. Um, it's still very, very close to that 7.0. So I'm gonna assume it's at least very, very accurate. If it's not spot on anymore, it's still right there. So I think, you know, it may be off by a little bit, um, but still right around a 9 pH. And again, this has been sitting around, so I don't know if that's what caused the issue or not. 
So that's it guys, very short and concise video for you today. I just wanted to retest this with a more precision type of an instrument here to get an accurate reading. The last thing I wanna do is create any confusion across these products within the detailing industry. I wanna be accurate. In my original video, I said it worked really, really well, even as a pre-wash, it worked like it was a higher pH, so I was kinda of confused by that. So again, I wanted to retest it and confirm guys, at least out of the new bottle um, that I just picked up for $6.97 at Walmart, uh, it did come in at the 10.25 pH, which is exactly what is listed on the MSDS. Now again, I talked about in the last video, would I recommend this stuff? Yes, it works well, I like it, uh, but you do have to use a good amount of product, right? Three ounces for moderate cleaning or pH neutral cleaning per gallon. So if you're using a five gallon bucket, you put three times five, 15 ounces in there just for pH neutral versus something, you know, I mean, if you go with gentle snow from, from Kokemi or something like that, you know, you're using significantly less product to get that same result. When you're using this in the foam cannon, they tell you to use it straight or even one part to one part, uh, so cut in half, um, to get good foaming and the cleaning ability. I will say the cleaning ability worked great and the foaming was fantastic. It was very, very good foam. However, that was 30 ounces of product, so definitely not the most cost effective there. But like I said, if you need something that it has a higher pH, if you want to do a pre-wash type of a situation um, and have the ability to also make it neutral and just use it that way, available at your local Walmart. I'm sure O'Reilly Auto Parts has it. Uh, I'm sure everywhere has this stuff. So Turtle Wax is a very, very well-known brand. And uh, I can confirm, 10.25, they do not lie about their pH level. Uh, again, this one is a little bit of a toss up, a little bit of a question, uh, but I think since it's been sitting, that may have been the issue. I don't know. But that's it for today's video. Please make sure to like the video, make sure you're subscribed, turn on that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.